पानी पीने इतनी भीड़ लगा के लड़ाई और होती है कि इतने पानी में भरूंगा पानी पानी जो है नल है कोई नल में पानी नहीं ना करता है पूरे आदमी ना भर पाएगी ना कछु कर पाएगी दस दिन पंद्रह दिन का पहले का पानी रखो उसे छन्नी से छान छान के अपना इस्तेमाल करते दाल नहीं पक पा रही यहाँ पानी में पानी की स्थिति ये है की जो है डेढ़ लाइन से नीचे पहुँच चुका है पानी बारिश होती है तो भर जाता है बारिश नहीं होगी तो कहाँ से भरेगा Hello and welcome to this very special edition at BTVI's Rundown to the Budget. I'm Shantanu Guhare. We are discussing an issue that has rattled India. It's not war, but it is water. Both words starting with the word W. Now there's a peculiar issue that's happening in India. India is finally realizing that water is becoming a serious subject and a crisis issue. We need to debate that, discuss that at a time when the government has formed a new ministry to discuss water, plan better water management and try and see whether they can revive water bodies, rivers and even try interlinking them, looking at irrigation, issues of drought and all of that and of course the monsoon. I'm joined in the studio by a very, very illustrious panel, Sarika Bahiti, founder chairperson Niranjali serving water, serving earth. Dr. K. Vijaya Lakshmi, who is the Vice President of Development Alternatives Group, which works very deeply into water. And my very dear friend, Sopan Joshi, a brilliant writer and, and a man who has dealt extensively on water issues. But before that, I'd like you to see reactions from another person, Lieutenant General Sudhir Sharma, who is the head Global Strategy Jana Jal, which also works very closely with the Indian government. Hear him out. I think uh, I would say that there is a shift taking place slightly. People are start thinking about water now. But I feel the awareness is still not there, the kind of need that is there. People have started now saying that we will not take a shower bath in the morning to save water. People today in the urban cities are flushing out, I think, thousands of liters of water every day. Just by using it, it's not being properly recycled or properly used. But of course, there's a need to get to the bottom of the problem, that is, we must conserve water, we must use it properly. People are using water to clean uh, their cars, their trucks, etc., which has been banned, but there is no implementation taking place of that. And I feel if we do that, we still have enough water to go around, should we husband it properly, and should we be able to recharge the systems properly, that is the sense of it. So that was Lieutenant General Sudhir Sharma. Let me now focus back into the panel, and let me start with you in that order, Ms. Bahiti. Water has become a suddenly a major crisis area. The president is saying this, the prime minister is saying this, almost the entire cabinet has started talking this. And ironically, barring the Congress, no political parties mentioned water in their manifestos. So have they suddenly woken up? So what exactly is happening with water now? Well, I think it has finally got attention and I am glad it is. Because as you said, water and war, both begin with W, but they also end with R. And so, water, yeah. <laughs> as they, they would say it. But water has always been one of the most essential elements of all for our survival on Earth. Uh, when we talk about water, it is soft, flexible, and yet very powerful, and hence, definitely not ignorable. And uh, now that uh, the second term of the new central government is taking this uh, more seriously, they did take it in the last uh, semester, like their session also. But I think it was not really as effective. But this time we hope that it will be taken on more seriously. But that means people actually didn't spend too much of time thinking about water. Is that what you're coming to? Interesting. So Panjoshi, Stal Jal Mal. Wasn't that that book you wrote and I, I distinctly remember your excellent work in issues relating to water. And we were discussing in, before we came into the studio how even the drought signals which were there since December people tend to ignore. So have people again woken up now or is it too late, too far now? Will it be tough for India? Uh, there are three different elements to this. The first is an understanding of water. 
the second is the wastage of water and the third is conservation of water. Now they they are all tricky matters because our understanding of water is is actually very watery because we we forget that uh, all all government conversation for example happens in either the terminology of economics or technology. Now no matter how much money you spend, no matter what your level of technology, you cannot make water. Pretty much all the water that we have on this planet has been around since the beginning of life. Scientists still don't know how we get water here. The, the, the best theory they have to explain water is that it came on asteroids. Now, uh, we don't know when the next asteroid is going to come and you cannot pass a law to make water. No matter how technologically uh, advanced uh, our uh, centers of excellence might be, you cannot make water because it is uh, uh, the reaction that, that can make water is so energy um, intensive that we cannot make it. So essentially, uh, we have to learn to deal with what we have which is, which brings us to the topic of limitation. Now in our times, when people believe that by passing laws and creating technology, you can solve problems. It is not possible to solve water problems by either laws or technologies. That's interesting mm -hmm. because everyone I spoke to, they all say, you know, we don't implement the technology and that's why we are in a problem. You know, the only time water, uh, I mean, the, the first dramatic case of water getting created was when the Zeppelin exploded okay, because and, and, it was uh, full of hydrogen okay. and once the explosion set off, it reacted with the oxygen outside and water came down. So okay. no matter how, many, how much research you put into it, uh, and there is, I mean, everybody, water is a lucrative market. It runs into uh, billions of dollars now, but people okay. can't make water. And so, we tend to live in this world of aspirations where we think if we aspire to something, we can get it. Well, you can't. Wait for the next comet. And maybe the, the kind of water it brings is not what will allow life to go on as it is today. That, that, that's very scary. So, Pan, let me shift to Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. So, what is the alternative? You're from the Development Alternatives Group. So, what does India do now? I think, uh, let me touch back um, on the issue of water and the crisis. Uh, the, f first of all, the crisis is not because there is no water. Water is plenty. It is about mismanagement. Mismanagement from all fronts. What we have, we have not secured. Rain is there. We haven't enough secured enough, either in the rural areas nor in the urban. Uh, there is not much scope in urban, but rural areas as well. And uh, rural areas are feeding to urban spaces and we don't realize that our lifelines are rivers, our lifelines are uh, water bodies, our lifelines are uh, the storage structures, not really the man-made structures. There, are, there, are enough, uh, uh, there is enough that nature has given, which we, if we had protected it and conserved it and community-based management, which used to happen and with a lot of wisdom. Uh, if you go to any of these water harvesting uh, 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 structures that we uh, want to preserve now, you read them and Talab uh, Abhi Khade Hai and those kind of uh, Anupam Mishra's books have given, uh, given us enough wisdom. What's missing is uh, lack of uh, management in an efficient way. So four things. We haven't secured what we are, have. Okay. So second point is we haven't used what we have in an efficient way. So it requires efficient use of water both in urban and rural areas. In rural areas, it's more towards agricultural efficiency. In urban areas, in the way we use, treat the water, uh, don't abuse it and use it uh, and don't throw it away, but reuse by treating the water. So the technology is available. It's about the willpower and making it happen. So that, that's that's very interesting. Let so me shift. That, from yeah, that, that point of view, development alternatives yeah. has been working Okay. both in the rural areas mm -hmm. of uh, Bundelkhand, uh, both in urban, uh, in the UP mm -hmm. part as well as in the MP part, Madhya Pradesh part. And in the urban cities, right now we are doing studies in four uh, smart cities and we are trying to understand the water flows and see where are the mismanagements happening. And to our, uh, it's not a new knowledge, but major uh, flaw is in our managing the water and the availability of water. Now you can actually see 
where the non revenue water is going so if you, it's much of it is in the form of leakage so because we are not managing it enough so uh, non revenue water is the 40% of water that is flowing into the cities is wasted not being that, that that's a, that's a very scary number sarika let me come back to you does that mean we lack planners or or people who can discuss water and plan it well so what what kind of experiences you had in As in for dealing my with my understanding water? on this first of all i feel that the policies that are there mm -hmm. either they are not being implemented well so okay. first of all we need to work on the policies and what i feel what kind of policy we now when make we talk it right about to water put it in constitution so right to water, and will yeah. that work ah uh -huh. so uh, the point is that each uh, like all these water policies are handled by the state governments i feel that if a central government is held responsible for it more and in conjunction with the state governments it will have a better result because then every state has a different set of problems related to water S some are like the drought uh, kind of states and some of them are flooded states so if the state governments along with the professionals in their respective areas mm -hmm. if they work as a team with the central government i think we can actually work on the policies better and then accordingly work on the infrastructures okay. because uh, when we talk about infrastructure like india is basically an agricultural land and a lot of like 80% of our uh, production is from the agriculture so much of water is consumed there but the micro irrigation part is not really implemented well and excessive use of fertilizers chemical mm. fertilizers that is so everything eventually is affecting the quality of water so as ma'am said that the, it's not that we have dearth of water it is just that we have abused it to such an extent that that water quality has depleted to an extent and it is actually a vicious cycle because even though uh, the wa water that actually seeps percolates into the mm -hmm. soil it's even spoiling the quality of the soil so it's not just so about one thing it that, is not just about yeah. water crisis we are actually talking about the entire environment and okay. that is what we are consuming indirectly and if we talk about uh, the kind of uh, i mean the rates water that we charge in india is much lesser than other countries that is because we believe that water is should be accessible for everyone it should be at the least cost but what if we actually make people aware that everything that you waste it will, will be charged for will we be wasting as much that's an interesting point so when let me come back to you alarms when it comes in we don't react that means we never put water on a priority level at the state government at the center government in policies so all of a sudden i can't pick out a magic wand and try and change it like a pc sarkar or something like that so that means i am actually getting into the problem now here the, so the first thing was the nature of water now the second thing was uh conservation so we need to understand uh, there's it's it's very common every monsoon we have these stories uh, being carried in the media that say we need to get rid of our reliance on the monsoon we are Looking, creatures yeah. of the monsoon it's like the mumbai floods every year is the same so story so that's like saying i need another planet you're welcome if you found one but there is no evidence of another habitable planet till now yeah. so uh without the monsoon we are nothing we are a nation of monsoon now the monsoon brings a plenty every year it hasn't ever failed That's the distribution is the uneven the monsoon brings in plenty every year so there was a i former director of imd has estimated the amount of water vapor that crosses the western ghats every monsoon it's 75000 tons of water vapor each day during the monsoon now obviously all this is not distributed evenly because 70 to 90% of our water comes God, rains please. down in a few hours in a few days in a 3 month monsoon period so what you do not get in terms of time the only way to compensate is by allocating space to it so when you do get water you store it how do you store it you make tanks you make sure the water stays inside the land that's how all people who have lived in this subcontinent have survived over centuries now that basic lesson has been forgotten in the times of colonial hydrology when we began to think that water comes in canals and 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 taps and that's why we've forgotten the basic lesson of when when the temporal dis distribution of water is not very even 
the only way to compensate for it is to have a spatial commitment. You have to commit space for water and you have to commit mental space for water right through the year. Let me take, before we take a break, Vijaya Lakshmi. If we don't have a mental space for water, we are not putting water onto the priority list. 80% of it goes into agriculture. And in the city, we keep hearing these stories. And, and what Sopan rightly said, stories about monsoons and all of that. That means we really don't think about water. Maybe you guys think, because you are working in water. Yeah. But, but So that means we, we are still at zero level. Our, our thought processes are still way behind and we have really not done anything. I, I, I think the way we need to understand the current um, issue the, uh, in front of us, in, not in terms of in isolation, is it policy, is it technology, is it uh, what is it, it's not in isolation, all of it together. First of all, coming back to what Sopan is saying, we don't have good water literacy, literacy in the country. People don't understand where the water is coming from. Right from the childhood, make sure that the water cycle is understood practically by the child. So then they need to experience how it can be actually preserved, conserved, and how the same water is coming back into our lives. If you pollute, pollute the water, and even if you treat, to the best of the technology and we don't have that kind of money to treat and I am working with a pro in a project called uh, Indo-EU Collaborative Research and there are emerging contaminants and what we are not mindful is the kind of uh, pollutants that we are putting in the either in the domestic sector or in the industry sector are they all coming back not completely treated. So these are pesticide residues, these are uh, uh, endocrine disruptive uh, 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 pollutants, they are not being treated. They, we don't even know how much is, away, uh, is there in the water. So once you don't appreciate that water is, uh, is a, the dynamic subject and the water cycle we need to appreciate and we need to make sure that the water cycle is more of, uh, you can actually create in such a way that it becomes self-sustainable. So whatever water you have, it is like money in the bank. So can I make sure that my money, my bank, my water in my bank, I will continue to reap back in a sustainable fashion. So which means source security, source sustainability. Whatever you have, make it sustainable. This is what I think many of the NGOs, friends like uh, Development Alternatives, Kesat, there are Watershed uh, Trust and uh, WOTR, mm. uh, People Science Institute, you name it. Many of the organizations are working in this principle of integrated water management and we are showing the way. So if you want to show, see the place where I can see the, show you the example of MP and UP. We have been working continuously in those regions and in the last, uh, in 2018, there was flood on the side of um, MP part and on the UP part, the, uh, the drought is still continuing. In the places where we are working, in the flood regions, water tables have gone up uh, because we have created, revived the traditional water harvesting structures. And you can see the uh, in indicators. Uh, ultimately, all it boils down to development indicators. Are the people migrating? Are the people sustaining uh, with their agriculture? Their income is going up? This is an indicator if we are doing well with water. So these parameters we are monitoring. And you can see that uh, in the, when there is in continuing drought in consecutive ways, but still people have some water to hold because the community has managed to uh, save, some, save water. some water because of they've done, we have through farmers uh, uh, we are integrating farming pr practices also through micro irrigation whatever water is available use it uh, judiciously in the through micro irrigation practices conserve water through traditional water harvesting structures revival and this is helping us so I the villages are coming back to okay. actually okay. you can see some good examples as well very this good that, I think that's a valid point I think we will take a short break here, but I think one point that came very strongly in the first session of discussion is water is money, water is cash. You need to use it judiciously. If you don't do that, you run out of that and the problem is at your home, at your doorstep. We will slip into a short break, stay with us and let's hear some more stimulating conversations or something that's very close to our heart, water.
वेलकम बैक लेट्स स्टार्ट द सेकंड हाफ ऑफ दिस डिस्कशन ऑन वाटर एंड लेट मी स्टार्ट विद यू सरिका न्यू गवर्नमेंट इन प्लेस आई मीन ऑफ कोर्स दे हैव गॉन अ ग्रेट मैंडेट एंड नाउ वी हैव अ मिनिस्ट्री दैट लुक्स स्पेसिफिकली इनटू वाटर व्हाट आर द चांसेस ऑफ इट्स वर्किंग वेल इट हैज फाइव इयर्स सो आई थिंक दैट्स अ रिजनेबल टाइम फॉर द मिनिस्ट्री टू वर्क क्लोजली विद द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स what do you think it the ministry should do and the whether the ministry is capable of handling it this time as i said in the beginning that i'm hopeful that this term they will be able to actually reach out with a uh, proper solution and implementation and first of all while on one hand make in india and industries are being promoted in different states i feel that the these things uh, the way affluence are actually discharged i think there should be a very strict norm about it whether it be textile industry or chemical based industries whether they are discharging into water or the air if we take care of those so again that comes back to the policy making as well and uh, another thing i think the root cause in india is basically the population that we have we can't cut that down we can't obviously. cut that down so, but china but did Once upon a time China had drastically managed to reduce their rate of growth in population which i feel number one i mean this is definitely the issue that in past the so many years the more people more use more people more the usage and more the need to actually spread awareness because everybody in india they have we've had a tendency to grab as much as we can for ourselves so when we say about the mental absorption in uh, the bank for water so as much as we are trying to spread awareness so number one people are not even aware that it is actually you said that the problem has actually come to your doorstep people still not take it for granted and uh, i'm don't be surprised when i tell you that principals of schools when i bring them to the, bring it to their notice that their overhead tanks are overflowing oh is it okay we will take an action on that but they still don't if principals of schools do not do that who else do we think is educated enough sensible enough wise enough to implement all those things yes. so uh, but rain water harvesting is one thing uh, which is for sure the solution because uh, a lot of water say about only not even more than 10% i think is actually used reused or is getting absorbed in the by the soil by the earth rest all is actually going into the drain so why are we letting this happen we have to act upon this very so very rainwater valid, ha- uh, yeah. i'm glad that this is happening in june i sure hope that we can just fast implement before the monsoon arrives in many more states it has mm. already arrived at many places mm. but i hope we can lovely but that could be a very tough job so pan i mean <laughs> well, i mean can we educate indian difficult. can we in- educate indians about water we had a great degree of water literacy in this country We, we lost had. it. We lost it. We lost yeah. it. When yeah. did we lose it? Oh, well, uh, it's largely under the uh, under the colonial uh, uh, administration, which had a very different idea of handling water. It's been sixty years now, so far. So we know. have more or less carried on their ideas of hydrology. We have not gone back to how water has been traditionally managed here. Okay. You want an example? Sure. Look at uh, all our cities are thieves today. they steal other people's water yes all and these cities the earlier water. delhi for example okay. had many uh, uh, water harvesting structures it had many tanks it had many um, little rivers that joined the yamuna now uh, we've managed to get rid of them because we see them only as real estate then we go and steal other people's water delhi gets its water from several uh, tens of kilometers away Delhi gets Ganga's water, although it's on Yamuna's bank. Now, once we get all that water, once we steal everybody else's water, what do we do with it? Mm-hmm. Right? More than eighty percent of water used goes into the drain. Right? The reason our water bodies are polluted, the single biggest reason our water bodies are contaminated, is untreated sewage. That means our feces and urine. So we steal other people's water. then we use it to flush down our waste into water bodies from which we have earlier drawn water this has become our idea of sanitation which is ensuring that what after all what do we eat what is sewage sewage is last night's dinner yeah 
when we eat it, it's, 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 it's food. It's nutrients that have come from the land. Now, the natural cycle is nutrients that come from the land ought to go back to the land. But we take nutrients out of the land, we put it through our bodies, and then we put it in water. So our land is turning barren, our water bodies are contaminated, and we call this sanitation. That's extremely scary, very, very scary. Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, let's hear from you if there is a solution to all this. I mean, do, can you or do we have the time and the energy to educate Indians on water? Can we tell the farmers to shift their cycles so that more water consuming crops can be curtailed and maybe shifted to some other areas? Can something be done? I'm quite optimistic. And uh, on these lines, several initiatives are already happening uh, on their own initiative or through government uh, support. NABARD has been, uh, as a bank, uh, is putting in money in, uh, into uh, uh, watershed management, which is greatly helping soil uh, moisture to be retained, what the agroforestry outside the forest is, uh, we are managing, uh, able to do it. That is where the money is being uh, invested by the, uh, the government uh, agencies. But while it is happening, individuals at various, in various cities, you will hear these stories that they, it is possible that we can actually harvest the water in the house and make one uh, person, uh, one house, uh, individual household more uh, self-dependent. Self yeah, and sure. uh, as Sopan is saying yes. that 80 percent of the water that is going out can be recycled and put back. So, this is the water is easily treatable if you have a decentralized treatment systems at the, uh, at the maybe the resident welfare association levels in this, in the in the cities, exactly. in the cities itself, yes, on yes, that yes. water can actually be used for horticulture and other secondary purposes. Point taken, point then taken. eighty percent water load demand can be reduced. Very very strong points. Sopan Joshi, Sarike Bhaiti, Dr. Vijay Lashmi, thank you all very much for being a part of the show. The final word that you need to handle water well. If you cannot do that, it's like the cash in your locker. You will eventually end up a pauper. We wrap the show here. Keep watching BTVI. I'm Shantanu Guhare. Over to the studios.